so confidence interval for population mean uh, we have seen in the previous uh, video where we have uh, we had two cases uh, the first case was uh, the population variance was known and the pop second case population variance was unknown now we have uh, that means we have completed this part so today we'll talk of uh, this one and this one so confidence interval for population proportion um, let us say uh, to understand population proportion uh, we take an example let's say we have uh, x is the number of observations in a sample we have uh, x it is a number it's a number of observations possessing a particular attribute certain attribute okay so number of observations with an attribute or with a with a unique attribute right and n is the total observations total observations then the sample proportion what would be the sample proportion here is it represented in p the small p sample proportion is equal to x by n right is the total sample size and is this is out of this sample size x are the numbers with a certain attribute okay attribute could be anything certain characteristics certain attribute let us say uh, people with specs as one attribute in a class so and this will always be less than equal to one right and p is the capital p is the population pro proportion the same proportion of attributes in the population is p capital p this is the sample proportion small p this is the population proportion caps p in this case the expectation of the proportion the sample proportion will be equal to the population proportion right and variance okay we go to the next page and the variance so expectation will be the capital P the population proportion and variance of the sample proportion will be equal to P Q by N so this is the population proportion and Q is very simple Q is equal to 1 minus P obviously whichever they don't have this attribute is P right the proportion of the, the population having attributes and proportion of the population not having the attributes right so in this kind of a, a population proportion kind of a distribution and there are in uh, cases where sample size into the sample proportion multiplied by sample proportion if it is more than 5 and n into q is more than 5 so q is 1 minus p right this then it is a large sample if these two conditions they fulfill then it is called large sample and the by central limit theorem the sampling distribution is approximately normally distributed with mean p and variance pq by n so when these kind of distributions um, are required to be handled and we find that np is greater than 5 and nq is greater than 5 then the sampling distribution app is approximately normally distributed with the mean p this is the mean to p and variance equal to pq by n we are not going into the mathematical derivations the idea is to just show you uh, the confidence interval estimations uh, limits here right 
and here since it follows a normal distribution for certain condition as we said so z will be equal to p minus p is like p into 1 minus p by n and this follows a normal distribution as we are saying right it's a very simple thing the small p is the this one is the sample proportion this is the population proportion no the confidence interval limits in this case will be so the, what will the ci limits the confidence interval limits will be you can find it out the same method that i showed you initially alpha by 2 so p minus plus z or z at alpha by 2 multiplied by p into p into multiplied by 1 minus sorry 1 minus p by n okay so p is the, the capital p is the population proportion and do not get uh, scared with these uh, outcomes or the formulas because uh, these are not so difficult you can go through and derive yourself and find out the whole idea is to show you what are the various situations and how to find out the confidence interval so it is not very difficult uh, uh, and can be systematically derived right so the last one we'll deal with the last one as i said uh, initially so ci for population variance that's the case three so confidence interval how to estimate the confidence intervals for population variance right so that is uh, <coughs> we did for ci for population mean we did ci for population proportion and now we'll do ci for population variance when population mean is known when we know that the population mean is known as we have seen in the chi-square cases chi-square is equal to if you remember this formula I let me do it in a fresh page when the population mean is known chi square is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to n xi minus mu whole square by sigma square and this resembles a chi square distribution with n degree of freedom we have seen it right you know if you want to graphically see this uh, with this this is the chi-square distribution the graph is not the perfect graph obviously graph obviously this is the chi-square with n degree of freedom the chi-square variate for 1 minus alpha by 2 and you know you can see this one this is the chi-square again variate n degree of freedom at alpha by 2 the reason is the uh, this is this area this area is 1 minus alpha this is this area is alpha by 2 and this area is again alpha by 2 so if you look at this picture then you can obviously derive this particular probability is 
now the chi square for this interval we have seen that interval and 1 minus alpha by 2 is less than equal to chi square is less than equal to chi square same degree of freedom is n at alpha by 2 right we have seen this is the graph we saw just now is equal to 1 minus alpha right so the chi square variate falls between these two confidence intervals and the confidence interval limits for population variances in this case if we if you derive it further the way i showed you for the standard normal variate where i'm i'm not showing the derivation here in this situation the confidence interval limits for population variance will be for population variance variance based on this the confidence interval limits would be Psi minus mu whole square is equal to 1 to n divided by chi square n at alpha by 2 and y is equal to 1 to n xi minus mu whole square. You can find out the derivations yourself. Or you can refer to any book to see and find any difficulty but it's very simple the derivation these will be the two confidence intervals for uh, limits for a uh, population uh, variance when the population mean is known right because we are using let me change the color here so that it will be more clear we are using here we are using the population means in our confidence interval so this is a case of finding the confidence interval for population variance when the population means up mean is known right there could be a case uh, when the mean is unknown and we have to find the confidence interval for the population variance so case b okay uh, <coughs> in this case when the population mean is unknown the chi square will be so if, if, you, if the population mean is unknown what is it that we should use it you remember what we saw previously is xi minus x bar square by sigma square if you remember this in our initial videos or initial lecture that i have shown in the sampling distribution lecture this n minus 1 s square by sigma square it follows a chi square distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom and we, we already had a recap today and uh, s square where we know is 1 by 1 minus n summation of xi minus x bar square that is equal to 1 to n right so this is the case when the population mean is unknown here in this case uh, we do not know the mu value so what we will do is we will finally arrive at confidence interval limits for this kind of a situation as n minus 1 into the sample variance divided sorry divided by chi square with n minus 1 degree of freedom at alpha by 2 and the other limit is n minus 1 sample square chi square n minus 1 1 minus alpha by 2 this will be the final confidence interval limits 
patient is again plain and simple you can go step by step and and do it i'm not going into the details okay so there's another concept uh, called the minimum length of confidence interval uh, um, normally is chosen for the best confidence interval so if you have uh, three or four confidence intervals whatever is the minimum length from upper limit to lower limit minus lower limit the minimum one is chosen and uh, the last thing i want to show you quickly is how do we determine sample size or the minimum sample size what is a good minimum sample size right so what could be a minimum sample size that is considered to be good and how do we find it so just quickly i think uh, we have already consumed a lot of time so p minus z alpha by 2 sigma n is less than mu is less than x bar plus z alpha at alpha by 2 sigma by root n is equal to 1 minus alpha we have seen the first case standard normal case is equal to or we can say implies p negative z at alpha by 2 negative uh, standard variate at alpha by 2 into sigma by n and x bar minus mu so This is just a derivation of the formula. Again, this is equal to one minus alpha. So finally, we get what do we get here? We get. I'm sorry. We get. Just one minute something has gone wrong okay finally we get x bar minus mu is less than equal to z at alpha by sigma by root sigma by root n please uh, go through these uh, derivations these are not uh, very complicated and uh, now you can find it uh, by yourself so you don't need to worry about it and in case if i have done any any typo error that uh, just ignore it but uh, the essential i want to show you that the uh, error that will come in the sample mean minus the population mean this is the error right this is called sampling error sampling error is is the sample mean minus the population mean which will be the standard variate at alpha by 2 sigma multiplied by sigma by root n okay so sample error what we have found out what we have found out is equal to x bar minus mu is equal to z at alpha by 2 sigma by root n right and if you cross multiply and solve it at the end you can find out the value of n here so the minimum sample size will be z square at alpha by 2 z alpha by 2 whole square sigma square whole divided by e square okay so the sample size is inversely proportional to the error of 
quite obvious as we said initially if you take a bigger sample size the sample sampling error will be small when the population is finite size n and sampling is done without replacement then finite population correction is also required right we have a finite population of say n population is a finite capital n and there is no replacement being done when you're taking the sample so in that case the correction factor is root n minus n by n minus 1 so I'm not going into the proof of it just to show you so the final error with correction will be that at alpha by 2 sigma by root n and multiply with the correction factor that is n minus n by n minus 1 right and if you want to find out the value of n then you can solve this equation for the value of n as well with correction which in this case is a complicated uh, value don't worry about it it is just to show you how you can find out the minimum sample size so the complicated value that comes is chi squared alpha by 2 sigma square e square you don't need to remember these formulas in any case plus that square alpha by two sigma square what is important to understand is that we know that there is a sampling error in finding out uh, uh, the population estimating the population parameter right and that sampling error uh, for now if we take a for uh, it take the difference between the sample mean and the population mean that is the, the sampling error and based on that we can find out uh, the size of the sample which is required and again uh, there is a method to find uh, determine the minimum sample size for estimating population proportion I'm not at all going into the details of it so in case of a proportion now you understand what is a proportion I we already discussed previously in that case if you have to find the minimum sample size then the formula is z squared alpha by 2 in p is the population proportion p whole divided by the error square right so and in this case uh, by the way uh, for the proportion population proportion the sampling error we cannot say that the sampling error is x bar minus mu here it is meaningless it is the sample proportion minus the population proportion so just remember this is this thing and again you can apply the same correction here also as well and minus n by n minus 1 so anyway we are not going into the uh, formula for this uh, as it will confuse uh, you and you can always uh, refer any book to find out the formula those are not important thing the important thing is to understand the concept of how do we estimate uh, the confidence interval and this is I understand that this is just a dry topic because I have not taken any real examples here and going forward we'll pick uh, real examples plot it either in R or in Python then we will uh, do some uh, some kind of uh, uh, real life uh, kind of problem or the real cases but these are just the uh, uh, theoretical concepts behind so that uh, you understand uh, what is the underlying mathematics behind the confidence interval estimation anyway thank you and uh, uh, thank you for watching this video